Hello, I'm Police Chief Richard Nemisto. Welcome to the City of Farmington Hills Police Neighborhood Watch Program, a program based on the principle of neighbors looking out for neighbors. I would like to thank you for your interest in the program. By being involved in a Neighborhood Watch group, you become the eyes and ears of the police department. This presentation will help guide you through the steps necessary to create a Neighborhood Watch program in your area. Please enjoy the presentation, and again, thank you for your interest in becoming involved. I'm Officer Scott Goosen of the Farmington Hills Police Department. Established in 1980, the Farmington Hills Neighborhood Watch Program has grown to include more than 140 active watch groups, with new groups being added each year. So how does Neighborhood Watch work? The guiding principle is really quite simple. Neighbors looking out for neighbors. Nobody knows your neighborhood better than you and your neighbors. You or your neighbors may have been living in the same household for 10, 20, even 30 years. You know your neighbors and who normally belongs in your neighborhood. Statistically, most residential burglaries take place during the day while many people are at work and their homes are unoccupied. This is where a Neighborhood Watch program can make a difference. A well-established Neighborhood Watch group helps eliminate the opportunity for criminals to operate in your neighborhood. It trains you and your neighbors to be the eyes and ears of the police department and gives you the knowledge to help you better secure your home and property from criminal activity. Let's talk briefly about the crime triangle, a basic concept to crime prevention. The three sides of the triangle represent the three necessary elements for a crime to occur, a desire, a victim, and an opportunity. Let's talk about each one more in depth. Desire or motivation is the factor influencing the criminal in their illegal behavior. It may be the need of money for drugs, gambling, or an array of other reasons. We often have little control over one's desire to commit crime. The victim in our crime triangle may unfortunately be you or your property. We often have little control over who will become a victim. It is frequently decided by the criminal, but there are identifiable precautions that you can take to influence that decision. We'll get to that in a minute. It is the opportunity segment that we in the police department and you, a neighborhood watch group, can have a tremendous impact. By limiting opportunity, we can deter crime. After all, criminals are looking for the least amount of risk with the biggest return. Neighborhood watch is primarily designed to target the opportunity component of the triangle. We want to make it difficult and risky for the criminal to work in your neighborhood. We will talk more on how to eliminate this opportunity later. Let's first look at a short video produced by Channel 7 News that depicts just how easy and quick it can be to break into someone's home and what criminals fear the most. Let's go, let's go, let's go. What you're watching is real. It's not rehearsed, it's not choreographed. A gang of three professional burglars are breaking into a real house. It isn't rare. It happens 211 times a day in the state of Michigan. That's one burglary every seven minutes. Hurry up, hurry up. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Even if you have a burglar alarm, these thieves practice getting in and out before the police can respond. Using six cameras, three real-life burglars, and one getaway truck, you're about to see exactly how fast they can do it in real time through video like you'll never see again. You got it? That's it, fellas. That's it. We set it off. We begin at the Wayne County Jail. We're looking for the best, actually, amongst you, the best burglars. How long were you inside the house? No more than three minutes. I timed myself. Really? Like, it's like a marathon. And how much property were you able to grab in that amount of time? Three to four thousand dollars worth of merchandise. 
You've already seen how fast a team of convicted burglars can get in and get out with your property. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go! How they bypass deadbolt locks and ignore alarm systems. So what will stop them? What really works to protect your home from home invaders? That you have to ask them. What would stop you from breaking into a house? Dogs and well, good lightning and good neighbors. I say maybe neighborhood watch signs. A lot of neighborhood watch signs let you know. You That's never know who's looking out. Um, I say alarm, or if I were to be going up to the house and see a police car around the neighborhood. Other than that, I don't care about anything else. Okay. I say neighborhood watch too. This and, is a and neighborhood dogs watch. and light, lightning, lots of light. That scares you. Yeah. How about you? Anything special? Yeah, bright light. Dogs, I hear dogs, so I don't know what kind of dog it is. It might be a pit or something. Uh. That's right. Of all the convicted burglars we spoke to, the number one reason they gave us for not breaking into a house would be a dog. And it doesn't have to be a big dog like Sonny here either. Any dog, they say, will scare them off. In fact, you don't even have to have a dog. Just having a big bag of food or a couple of dog dishes outside your front door is enough to make these guys go away. Next is good lighting. The thieves we spoke to say powerful lighting is frightening to them because it makes it too difficult to hide what they're doing. That's it, fellas, that's it. We set it off. And finally, what strikes fear in the hearts of burglars? Neighborhood watch. I say neighborhood watch, too. Maybe neighborhood watch signs. A lot of neighborhood watch signs let you know. You that's never know who's looking out. That's right. Above all electronic devices your money can buy, real burglars fear your neighbors most. Because if they're organized and constantly looking out for each other, then suddenly this becomes impossible. Hello, I'm Juliet McLynch, and I'm a crime prevention technician with the Farmington Hills Police Department. I'm going to walk you through all you need to know to institute a neighborhood watch program in your neighborhood. The first step is to decide the size of the area that you and the involved group are seeking to include a street, a subdivision, or a condominium complex. Once an area or group has been established, your group will need to identify a coordinator for your watch group. The coordinators will also serve as a liaison between the police department and residents within their group, helping to plan group meetings and other activities. A detailed list of coordinator responsibilities is contained within the Neighborhood Watch Manual, which is available from the police department's crime prevention section. A meeting should be scheduled with as many involved residents as possible. At this meeting, all residents must sign in. This sign-in procedure is critical in establishing and implementing a neighborhood watch program as the program requires a minimum of 50% of all households in your designated area to attend a general membership meeting. During this initial meeting, residents can view this neighborhood watch video. Once the mandated 50% participation mark is met within a group, neighborhood watch signs can be placed in your designated area. In most subdivisions, it is often difficult to achieve this 50% mark at your first meeting. We encourage all groups to hold meetings at least every three months. At your first neighborhood watch meeting, the Farmington Hills Police Department will have a representative attend to discuss ways to deter crime in your neighborhood and around your home. They will also be available for questions you or your group may have about the neighborhood watch program and safety in general. In order for the Neighborhood Watch program to work, it is critical that all residents know how the program works. Here is a video courtesy of MSNBC, which shows how you, as a neighbor, could be duped by a criminal. What would your neighbors do if someone were breaking into your house? Jewelry. We'll just take the whole jewelry box. Of all crimes reported in the United States, property crime ranks first. The vast majority of burglaries happen at private homes during the day when most people are off to work. And if it was easy for NBC security consultant Bill Stanton to break into a car without much interference, he says breaking into a home is even easier. And again, he says it's because neighbors aren't watching out for each other. You know, everybody always says we live in a strong community. Watch our neighbors watch out. We watch out for each other. Well, we put that to the test. If a stranger was trying to get into your house, would anyone notice? Would they call the police? 
So we found a family to volunteer their home. Is everything well? Yep. In a residential neighborhood in suburban New York, where people would be out on the street. That's the house. Stanton played the role of a burglar dressed as a construction worker and openly appeared to be breaking into the home. Again, we've told local authorities about his experiment just in case someone does call 911. For this caper, Stanton brings along a partner in crime, an NBC staffer wearing a hidden camera. They pull up in a van posing as a road crew and right away engage a neighbor across the street. You're okay with these cones here, right? All right. Stanton says being friendly makes him seem less suspicious. Right now, I'm identifying there was an open window. So that's going to be my way in. And with the neighbors watching, Stanton leans a ladder against the house and climbs in. Is this a bedroom? Yeah, it's probably the most important room in their house. It's their baby's room. These neighbors appear curious, but don't call police even when Stanton and his accomplice carry out golf clubs and other personal items. Now they're watching us. He knew something was up. And as he drives away, do you know if there's any block watch or any security companies around here? Stanton even stops these women and tells them exactly what he's up to. We're going to just burglarize a house, that's all. <laughs> Have a good day. And believe it or not, still no one calls 911. Next stop, another house, this time in a gated community near Las Vegas. We're rolling right now. To get past the automated gate, Stanton simply waits for another car to punch the security code and then follows it in. We decided to up the ante. We took away the construction outfit. You're going to make it even more obvious this time. That's right. No, right. Dis Let's no disguise. No right. disguise. Exactly. Stanton looks for a way in. No open window or door, but Stanton says if he simply broke a window, he'd get inside. Especially in a secluded area like this backyard. And if you're wondering about an alarm, Stanton and the police say it's a deterrent. But he says it's not a barrier he can't beat if he acts quickly. But could Stanton get past the neighbors? Watch how he even brags about being a burglar. Hey, neighbors. <laughs> Do you know if the if the patents are coming home soon? Oh, do you guys you guys don't live around here? Yeah, we live here. We're just the oh. oh, well, I'm in the middle of robbing this house for crying out loud. <laughs> doing well, doing well. Yeah. No, we're just here. I'm here to pick up some stuff. I'm looking for them there. I'm waiting for them to come home. I want to know if anybody had an idea. Oh, you got me. All righty. <laughs> if you guys want to help on the way back, you're more than welcome. Yeah, right. right. I'll cut you in for it. I'll just give you my address. <laughs> You just said, I'm robbing the house. You made a joke out of it. You right. shook his hand. Okay, now how so many... of course he's not going to think you're robbing well, the well, house. Well, time out. I just threw him off the mark. And they didn't even... They may have been questioning me, but I just erased all that suspicion out of their mind by a couple of easy sentences. What should he have done? Look at this person in your community that's walking out with property. Question them. If nothing else, how long does it take to jot down a license number? When we showed the tape to the owners of this house, they were shocked when they learned these weren't just any neighbors. They're the homeowners association, um, the volunteers who live in the community, but live the around the corner. That write you up if your light bulbs aren't Correct. working properly. Correct. 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 We, many times. Yeah. Former chief psychologist for the U.S. Secret Service, Marisa Randazzo, says the neighbor's reaction is a classic case of bystander apathy. We've upped the ante. It's not a car, it's a house. The neighbors look across the street. They clearly see him there. What are they thinking, do you think? They're inhibited by the fact that they think Bill is supposed to be there. It's similar to assuming there's a prior relationship between a victim and an attacker. They think there may be a prior relationship between Bill and the people who live in this house. But at the next house, also in Las Vegas, could Stanton be even more obvious? Watch what happens when he flags down a pizza delivery man. What do you have? I have a cigar, 